Okay, welcome back. Let's jump right in uh, and we'll take this assembly apart and we'll see what we have. So uh, the factory setup, uh, we'll take some parts off that we don't need right off the bat. And these are things that you can basically put off to the side. Uh, there's some slow motion controls. This is the counterweight shaft This comes off. Um, these are azimuth knobs for adjusting the azimuth and altitude knobs, so all those can come off. These are all accessories on the sides. So for the uh, for the slow motion knobs, there's a little Phillips head screwdriver screw you loosen on each one, and these knobs will just come right off. One and two. Take them, put them off to the side. Uh, there's a cover here which is the top of the polar scope inside. Now this one doesn't have a polar scope mounted on it, but it does have the assembly for it. So I bring this around, you can see here, there's a cover. This just slides off. Inside this is the polar scope mount. If there was a scope, it'd be mounted right in here. So for this, this whole assembly can just be grabbed and taken right off. So it's just unscrewed. So it comes with this metal plate aluminum plate and that comes off that can go off to the side store it in there okay here this ring the uh, right ascension hour ring this knob this screw can loosen take the screw all the way out and this should just slide right off it might be a little sticky there's some grease in there but it should come right out so I'll put that off to the side there here, I'll bring this back down here. So these are the two altitude adjustment knobs. And they just wind out. So we can take those. You can see these are quite long. Very long. room here. There you go. There's a shorter one and a longer one. The shorter one goes on the side of these knobs. Okay, so we'll keep track of those later. Speaking of the knobs, there's two of them here. They can come out. Again, these are long, thin screws with knobs. These are the same size, so it doesn't matter which one goes where. There you go. So we'll put those up there. So here we're keeping track of all of our spare parts. Okay. Uh, next step is we can bring this around. The counterweight bar can come off. So this piece here is actually a giant locking nut. So hold the bar with one hand and loosen that a little bit with the other hand and the whole thing spins off. So there's our counterweight bar coming off. So that comes off. And on the end is a toe saver screw. That can stay there. And off to the side. So now what we have is basically the bare mount. And if I flip this over, we'll see to the other side. So uh, right now all the axes are lo uh, loose. So the whole thing can kind of move around. So this is our bare mount. And there are three primary parts to it. There's the base here. There's the right ascension housing here. And there's the declination housing here. This part is the saddle, that's where the optical tube mounts. So we're going to take these all these pieces apart into smaller pieces, and then we're going to disassemble them. We're going to open up all the way and expose the gears and all that. And uh, that will make things uh, piece by piece, we'll work on it. So one of the first things we can do is we can, uh, here are lock knobs take those off. So these are designed to lock the axis. So if you tighten this up counterclockwise, the axis gets locked. 
And if you loosen it then, you can spin, okay? So what's actually going on in here is there's a threaded screw assembly with a little hard plastic puck inside. And when you turn it clockwise, it screws in and it presses that puck against the axle inside. So we have a screw that comes off, okay? Then this handle. Now these are often stuck on here pretty tightly. So you're gonna have to wrench it and kind of break it loose off there. It's made of metal, you're not gonna hurt it, but it gets bound up on there. I think that the factory sometimes put just a little bit of glue to hold it in place. And then here's a screw here. This is the actual screw assembly. So if this turns clockwise, it presses down and against the axis. And if you loosen it, it comes off the axis and you're allowed to then spin things. So we'll take that out as well. Okay, so that's what it looks like there. And I would take these three pieces then and just put them back together loosely if you can keep track of them. Also be aware that when you get in here, this is going to have some of the factory grease inside right here on the threads. The grease that's inside these assemblies is a very, very heavy grease that's used by uh, the company Sinta, which is the company that basically makes this for Celestron, the Chinese company, and they use this very, very heavy grease. It's almost like molasses. The reason they use that is because that heavy grease fills in voids and gaps in the assembly and makes it feel like the assembly is much sturdier than it really is. It prevents them from having to machine things to the highest level, but it also makes things very sticky. I mean, you can, you can even see as I'm turning this, uh, when I measured this, it was taking about 10 or so inch pounds to rotate this assembly. It should be essentially zero. You should be able to just spin this with your finger, and I obviously cannot. It takes quite a bit of work just to spin it at all. So part of that is this heavy, heavy grease that's in there, and one of the things we're going to do is we're going to try to remove all of that and replace it with a much lighter grease. It's going to make it easier to move and easier to align. Right now, you can imagine if you're trying to sit here and center something in this telescope, it'd be very, very hard because you can see how it almost just slips and sticks in position. There's no way to use a telescope that way. And this is what frustrates a lot of people when they get one of these telescopes, one of these mounts, uh, is it's very hard to use. And they blame it on it just being difficult when, in fact, it's not necessarily a bad design. It just needs some work. So let's take the other lock assembly off. Do the same thing. Unscrew the screw. Take the cover handle off. And the inner piece. This one's really gooped up. I can feel it as I'm turning it out. It feels like it's going through glue. So you'll notice this one is very, very long and a bigger diameter than the other one. Uh, this has, got to, this uh, has to drive into a deeper section of the axis. So if I bring it up here to the camera, uh, I don't know how well it focuses, but basically that's what you're dealing with. So again, let's put these back together, keep track of them. And while we're at it, you might have noticed something just fell off. This is the uh, little puck that I was saying was inside there that presses against the axle. In this case, it's a piece of brass. So it actually sits there. And <clears throat> the reason they do this, instead of having just a piece on the end here, since this spins and the axle is here, if it tightens up against it, it can actually gouge against the axle when it spins and tear it up and make it not work well. So instead, you put a puck there in the middle, and it spins against the puck, and then the puck just presses in. So that, there's going to be a second one in here that didn't come out yet, but this one did come out. So we'll keep track of that as well. And again, this is, I mean, I, I, I can hold here. It's stuck to my thumb. That's how, that's how sticky that grease is. So you'll end up making a mess of everything for a while until we can get in and really clean things up. Uh, let's see. So let's take uh, up here on the, the saddle. This is where the telescope itself mounts. There's a locking knurled knob here. We'll take that one out. 
And this is the second one, this is a little safety knob that they put in in case the other one comes loose. Uh, this is really just an absolute emergency. If the other one comes loose and your telescope starts to lurch, that's supposed to catch it. But it's not going to hold anything for very long, so don't depend on that. Um, let's see. There's a screw here on the side. Uh, that is actually going to be used later on when we decide to install the, um, the motor drive. That's the screw that's used for it. So let's uh, loosen that. It doesn't do anything else, so we can remove it and just put it off to the side. Okay, there. So I mentioned some of the tools that we're going to need. All of these mounts like this are put together using socket head screws, okay? There's very few Phillips or flathead screws anywhere in here. They're all socket head screws. So you go, are going to need hex wrenches, okay? And in this case, uh, these mounts are metric, so you're going to need metric wrenches. And I would recommend some of those, some of those, some of those, and maybe even some more. Uh, you can never have enough hex wrenches. Uh, I find that uh, they serve different purposes. These are very heavy duty, and they don't have a ball, and they have square on both sides, so they're, they're very good for getting a lot of torque. These happen to have very sharp edges to them. These are stubby. So the L part is very short, relatively short. And there's going to be cases when we want these stubby ones. Now you can take a normal one and cut it down, but that doesn't always work very well. So I finally invested in stubby ones, and I use them all the time. These are some very expensive German ones. These are my go-to pieces. I use them all the time. But they are long, and sometimes they don't fit. Another set that I've used... Off the camera here is big T-handled ones. I have small ones, but the whole size. Um, these are nice. They have a ball drive. They have a square drive. And they have a big handle, so it's easy sometimes to get in there and, and use some torque to break things loose. So if you can get one set, that'd be great but you'll end up wanting other ones, and it's always worth investing in more. Um, so, like I said, this one comes out, so there's screw there. Uh, let's see what else we have. There's this uh, plate here. This is part of the uh, base assembly. Take that apart. This is a uh, backing plate that's used to support the, one of the azimuthal screws. Sorry, the altitude screws. That just comes off. Okay, that goes off to the side. Uh, let's see what else we can take off right away. Oh, I'll show you this. So the base here is uh, just held on by, in this case, a big single screw. And uh, this finger is what the azimuthal screws uh, adjust against. So for the time being, we can move the base off to the side there. So now we're kind of down to uh, the core part of the housing. Okay. So the next step is going to be taking these major parts apart and separating them. And then going inside each one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these pieces that we've accumulated here and I'm going to put them over in a storage tray. And in the next video we will have a nice clean work surface and we will now work on just the main part.